as a woman working in the industry, you have to work twice as hard to prove that you know your stuff. And I know I don't particularly work as a specialist in football, um, but knowing the girls that I work with that do, so Jackie Oakley, Katie Shanahan, Lindsay Hooper, those kind of um, girls, they have really had to break through this kind of glass ceiling to prove that they know their stuff. Like Jackie was the first female commentator to work on Match of the Day, and she has already had to face the criticism. She recently got the job as the presenter of Sunday Supplement on Sky Sports, and even now, you know, decades on from her first gig as a, as a football reporter, uh, working in such a male-dominated industry, she's still facing questions over whether she can do the job, and I think after, what is it, 17-odd years or whatever of doing it, she has proved um, beyond measure that she is an absolute heavyweight in the world of uh, football broadcasting, but the question marks are still there. Will it ever change? I, I don't know. I think all it takes is women being given the opportunities and doing a good job. Um, I like to think that um, Alex Scott is changing hearts and minds where that is um, it, where that is concerned, you know, on match of the day and football focus and all of the stuff she does. But I know she gets an awful lot of abuse as well. So she is changing people's minds. She does get that, oh, you know, actually she knows quite a lot for a girl. There's always that kind of caveat, that qualification that, you know, oh, you're a woman, but you can you can still talk about football. Um, I hope the more Alex Scott's and Jackie Oatley's that we get coming through, the more that will change, but it's a slow process, unfortunately. Um, there's a bigger platform for women now. There are more women on TV, you know, so it's not just about what we're wearing and what we look like. It's about what we're saying, and not just on TV, but having social media voice as well. We get to share our expertise on more different platforms than just appearing on the BBC Breakfast Sofa for a couple of minutes and reading the sports news aloud. Um, I think the way television's changing as well, and the way media is changing, it's not just a case of reading the auto cue and having back and to know your stuff because TV is much more conversational, much more um, informal these days. So you're, if, if you don't know what you're talking about on that red sofa, people will see through you in a matter of seconds um, because presenters ask you questions, the viewers ask you questions. You know, we're, we're reviewing what we're reading in the papers. We're talking about, we're talking around score as well, not just giving the scores, I think like people used to in the past and you know we go out and about we talk to people like you we are on social media we're interacting so your knowledge is tested really on a on a daily basis so i think having that credibility and a platform for credibility is changing the way that women are seen on the television for good in my opinion of female athletes in the media would be that um there's very good coverage of particularly sports like athletic swimming and um, particularly Olympics. I think this is because these sports are more for both genders and they're equally kind of valid. But I would say, for example, for football, um, even though there's a big push for um, media coverage of women's football, it's definitely heavily slanted towards the men's, um, men's side of things, um, particularly in terms of reporters. Um, that always men talk about men's football games, and I don't see why women should be able to comment on a game of men playing. Like, why don't have men commenting men, women commenting women? It should be like that. I also do feel that um, although there is a big push for more coverage of women's sport, for example, rugby, um, football, um, basketball, things that are more heavily covered by men, um, I would say it's almost like a sympathy push because. Some women have been sort of been like, oh, okay, there, here's a small section, but it's still not as popular as men's sport, which I don't really understand because it's the same game, um, same level of entertainment, um, but just seems to be that there's far more funding in men's sport. Um, in terms of female reporters, from what I've seen and what I've watched in recent media coverage, such as like athletics and swimming, um, I'd say it's pretty good, pretty balanced. It's because it's usually ex athletes, so it's, um, they know what they're doing, they're not a stereotype. Um, however, again, using put as an example, I'd say it's poorly represented by female reporters and it's usually men, um, which is just pointless because why can't women come in again? I mean, a man's game of football. Um, but overall, I do think the situation is improving, but it definitely still be better.
the media, the women, and the overall sexism in general. I think there's still definitely a gender pay gap. I don't have any facts and figures to prove that, but I think just on the basis that there have been there are guys who've been working in sports media for decades and the women are just about breaking through now, there's got to be a difference, hasn't there? I mean, if you get an incremental pay rise every year, then the guys will be on this much and, and the girls will be on this much. I'd like to think that across most broadcasters, that men and women doing the same job are getting paid for doing the same job. But whether or not that's the case, I can't tell you. I wish we had transparency at the BBC. I would really love to know. I'd be happy for people anywhere knowing how much I get paid, um, whether in my department or even outside the BBC. I'd be happy to know, for people to know that, so that I could also know how much they're being paid. I think that's the only way that we can really get the quality of pay to say, right, well, I know this is how much I'm on and how much are you on. Oh, right, okay, so we're pretty much on the same. I'm happy with that. How much are you on? Oh, you're on a lot less than me. Well, why don't you come up to my level? You know, it's, that's the only way we can find out is if we will talk about it. But there is this weird thing about pay, isn't it, where you, you're not supposed to know. You're supposed to talk about it. Um, I know that my uh, colleagues who work on Beavis Breakfast, they're all very open and transparent with each other so they all know exactly how much they're all being paid and they're all on exactly the same for the job that they do on breakfast. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, I wish we had best transparency. I would say in my department, there's always um, obviously the question of experience. So we have a kind of um, a kind of disparity of experience. We've got some people who've been working as presenters for a couple of decades and some people who are just coming to it now. I don't think you can necessarily be expected expect to be paid the same amount as somebody who's been broadcasting for a couple of decades um but at the same time you should hope to reach the same amount within a few years if you're all doing the same job 